can uh, to manage the technology and we have your presentation as well. So the presentation I think, Suad, should be on Nexus for everyone if you can't see it on the screens. Yes. Um, so, and also if there are issues with technology sometimes turning off the um, video can help as well. So Tom or David or Winona, do you want to kick off if you're there? Kia ora, are you able to hear me and see me? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. we can hear you. Lovely. Um, so, kia ora, I'm Winona Moore, uh, and I'm here representing the Equal Justice Project with my partner, Tom, if he is able to connect to. Uh, kia ora, everyone. Can you hear me? Kia ora, we can hear you, Tom. Thank you. Awesome, that's great. Um, in terms of the presentation, um, it's not letting me share my screen on the video. Okay, we'll just see if Suad can oh, let you share, or are we are we sharing that, Suad? We will share the presentation now. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you for so, that. So just if you could just let um, Suad please know when you would like the next slide. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for that. Okay. Okay, um, so Equal Justice Project, we're a pro bono charity run by students from the University of Auckland Law School, uh, and we aim to advocate for social and environmental justice within our communities. Um, so just a little bit of backstory, over the past three years, we've been working on a program of advocating to CCOs about their statements of intent, um, and we think that the CCO statement of intent should better reflect their accountability policy and the long-term plan. Um, if you're able to skip to the next slide. Oh. Yep, we can see this next slide. Thank okay, you. perfect. Um, so we have a particular interest in the climate change aspects of the accountability policy that was recently adopted in the long-term plan. Um, and while we believe that this current policy um, is an improvement from its predecessor, we think that it can be further improved um, in four ways in particular that you can see listed below on the slide. So first, stating that the council has declared a climate emergency um, and action should accord a high priority as a result. Second, uh, providing clearer expectations about emissions reduction and, ad and adaptation, um, really to clarify these as two distinct aspects of responding to the climate emergency. <clears throat> Third, uh, including more specific reporting requirements, um, specifically because CCOs are listed among the reporting organizations for adaptation plans and the Climate Change Response Act. Uh, and lastly, by requiring each substantive CCO to prepare and then adopt a climate mitigation and adaptation plan. Um, I will now hand you over to my partner, Tom. Awesome. Thanks very much for that, Winona. Um, if we're able to go to the next slide, that would be great. Awesome. So in order to give effect to these recommendations that Winona has just outlined, it would require an amendment to the long-term plan as part of the 2022 annual plan process. In doing so, this amendment will be able to undergo the public consultation and further consultation by council members before being adopted into the long-term plan. Now, to give action to these amendments, we are aware this can be done through a notice of motion. Um, we have prepared a draft notice of motion for you today, which outlines our proposed amendments to the policy and recommends that the governing body amend the long-term plan as part of the annual plan process next year. You should also have been provided an explanatory document written by Winona and myself, which provides background information to support the proposed motion. We understand making an amendment to the long-term plan is not a light decision for you to make, and hope this information provides the committee with confidence in why this is a rational and well-grounded action. Now, as you are most likely aware, a notice of motion needs two councillors to sign and countersign it. We are unsure whether a notice of motion such as this one is to be presented either to this committee or to the Appointments and Performance Review Committee, given the nature of its content. However, our suggested action to you is that two councillors sign and have a similar motion to this moved at the relevant committee once known. This will allow our proposed amendments presented to you today to be put into action. Um, if we're able to move to the next slide. 
Thank you very much. <clears throat> so as to why we believe it is the best decision for you to adopt these proposed amendments, the first is that the addition of clear-cut reporting requirements through an emissions reduction plan and an adaptation plan for CCOs helps CCOs know exactly what is expected of them rather than them having to piece it together themselves. Moreover, by including recognition of the Council's declaration of a climate emergency in the accountability policy, it provides confidence in citizens of Auckland that our Council is continuing in their strong commitment to combat the effects of climate change. EJP is an ongoing project, and our job is not to criticise, but rather aid councillors such as yourself on how policies can be improved in this area. We want to utilise our expertise to provide you with the best advice we can in the future. And by adding this amendment, our future students will be able to provide more constructive input into CCO statements of intent. Finally, the accountability policy is a key part of the Council's toolkit for ensuring CCOs take meaningful immediate action. These actions will have to be taken eventually, and by adding them immediately, you are safeguarding the prosperity of our beautiful city for the benefit of our generation. I would like to thank the committee very much for hearing us today, and uh, we are open to any questions that you may have. Kia ora. Thank you very much to the both of you. Are there any questions um, from committee members? I'd like to ask from the uh, Councillor Coombe, Deputy Chair. Uh, tēnā koe, um, Mr Chair, tēnā kurua, Tom and Winona, thank you so much um, for presenting. Really appreciated hearing from you today. Um, I think what you have put forward is really helpful for our understanding and thinking, and there may be ways in which um, we can respond that it's not necessarily through a notice of motion, but there are things that are happening, for example, like in the terms of reference for when we're appointing directors. And so this isn't really a question, but just a more of a commitment that we will follow up and respond. And I know our chair has already initiated that because I think we need to keep the dialogue going um, in terms of what we're doing at our end and um, what you've presented us today that we need to progress and that we can be doing better. So, um, Thank you very much for all the work that you have put into this presentation and really appreciate um, you taking the time to present. Nā mihi. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you very much for that. We really appreciate hearing that. And it's really great to know that you guys are taking these commitments seriously. And like we stated in our presentation, we're not here to criticise. Um, rather, we see that there is a really strong and good direction with the council, especially with the declaration of a climate emergency and um, and so we're sort of here to just guide you and your policies and it's really great to hear that you're willing to keep that dialogue open so thank you very much for that Kia ora, thank you um, another part I from Councillor Cooper Kia ora, Chair um, probably just one is yeah, you, the project is great my daughter was involved when she was at Auckland University Law School some few years back um, it's more a question um to the chair, can we have this passed on to our CCO um, oversight committee, maybe as an item um, to look at, rather than a notice of motion? Yes, definitely. I've already um, I've already asked for that too because I think we can probably strengthen all of this without sort of a blunt instrument like a notice of motion. Yeah, but definitely I, agree. Yeah, thank you. I agree. We don't need to do that. I think we're probably pretty much all um, in line with this. Thank you. Yep. Thanks very much for coming along. Uh, Councillor Watson. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the presentation. That was a, a very good one. Just um, a question in terms of um, this matter specifically, but, but also generally in terms of, of the work you do. Um, have you been um, aware of the, the CCO review that took place last year and um, amongst other things w was uh, concentrating on whether the CCOs acted in a way that reflected their accountability to the community um, as well as to the, to the council, which I, I think is part of your emphasis here today. H have you um, been through that document, which, which has a, a number of recommendations and commentaries, I think that dovetail very neatly with um, the work you're doing and also the, the recommendation you brought 
to us today. Have, are, you, are you aware of that document and have you, have you looked at it in any detail? Uh, kia ora, thank you very much for that um, question. Um, I personally am not aware of that document, but our mentor David Hay is in the call right now, and he might be able to tell you a bit more about that. David, if you're on the call. Perhaps not. Um, well, no, but I haven't uh, looked through that document, but I'm definitely willing to. And do you say that that um, sort of contains content on CCOs and their sort of <coughs> commitments to the council in regard to the accountability policy? Yes, I, I think, Tom, um, I mean, the work you've, you've been doing is outstanding, um, but I just think that this would this would be very, very helpful to that whole notion of um, accountability, not just back to the council, but to the community the council um, is responsible for too. So I just think it would be be useful to have the you know the backdrop to a, you know what was a, a largely almost a you know a million dollar report that's made a lot of very precise recommendations that go towards um, hopefully ensuring the, the type of response that that you're seeking through your your submission to us today. So I'm more than happy to um, to communicate with you offline to to point that document in your um, direction because I think it would be, be useful for you. Kia ora. Um, yeah, that would be amazing. I'd really appreciate that. And thank you very much for uh, pointing us to that. That's really helpful for our work. Oh, hey, hey, Tom, I'm on, online now. Um, David Hay here. So um, just to come back to that question, yes, um, uh, I've been guiding Tom and Winona through, you know, the various uh, elements of council's process and how the governance structure works, how the relationship between the CCOs and the uh, governing body and the committees work. Uh, I was aware of that document, but I thought that it's uh, Tom and Winona are quite busy law students and it was a little bit too much detail to, to delve into that. Um, so my advice to them was to look more at what's in the Local Government Act and the Local, um, Local Government Auckland Council Act in terms of these requirements around the accountability policy. And that's more their strength as law students to, um, to take that kind of statutory interpretation uh, angle on the, on the issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to um, David. And if uh, Suad could probably pr give Councillor Watson the emails of the speakers and if Councillor Watson wanted to uh, contact them that way, or we can go through Suad, whatever, whatever works. Um, a quick comment from Councillor Henderson, thank you. Yeah, just really quickly, I wanted to just uh, toe talk all those words, um, and the previous speakers have kind of covered a lot of what I was planning to say myself, but um, yeah, as I, I'm an EJP alumni, I used to run the uh, schools project uh, when I was in law school, and it's just really awesome to hear from you guys again, and just thank you for all the fantastic work you do, um, just making sure our communities are more equal um, and, and can access justice, and yeah, thank you for all of that. Kia ora, thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Henderson. Uh, member Karen Wilson, Pastai. Kia ora, kōrua Winona and Tom. Um, I, I'm, I'm so interested and impressed in this uh, and where it will go, it will go, I guess. Uh, my, my question is this, not knowing anything about this and not looking, googling uh, you all and looking at the promotion of social equity. My role here is as part of the IMBSB, Independent Māori Stat Board, and how that could potentially translate into social inequity around Māori as it relates to council. So watch very carefully as you as you traverse this part around climate change and see where we can take the next step in terms of social inequity. Well done, thank you. Kia ora. thank you very much for those words. Appreciate it. Thank you, Member Wilson. Um, Councillor Walker, question. Sure. Um, hi there. So I get the 
I get the uh, comment and the advice that you're giving us around the distinction between climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation. And I understand uh, the necessity of uh, reporting on those things and um, I, would, I would suggest that yes, it um, is important to report on them in terms of accountability and that should require a split in the, in the budget so those things are defined. And yes, it applies to CCOs, but equally it applies to um, Auckland Council. So I just seek your, um, your comment around that because as much and all as um, the suggestions you're putting indicate um, the desirability of that um, split, they could go uh, further in terms of the reporting in the, the budgetary split. And I'd invite your comment around that. Thanks. Um, kia ora, thank you for that question. Um, and I think we definitely do think that that's a very important point to make. Um, I guess we can't speak too much further to our exact thoughts on that, but what we are really trying to get across is that um, we think that it's really important for councillors to better respond to the climate emergency, um, particularly for our generation, and it's important for CCOs to take meaningful and immediate action. And these are just some of the ways that we've been working on that we think that could be made possible. The other quick question I'd ask um, is around the issues of um, also reporting around scenarios as it goes to um, budgeting and accountability. Uh, our present uh, process is pretty much locked into um, just a, a single um, um, reporting construct um, without considering scenarios against a background where there's a great deal of uncertainty around climate change and arguably the need to have scenarios that indicate um, more resource that's required. I'd invite you to comment on that. Uh, perhaps I could jump in here. Uh, Councillor Walker, David Hay speaking. Um, I've been guiding these students really through a process of just looking at the legislative framework for governance of CCOs. We haven't really gone into um, the budgeting and planning side of things. Uh, because of the way the Equal Justice Project is set up, we missed the time frame for uh, making a submission into the long-term plan this year. But I think, um, you know, from my experience, I think broadly speaking, you're right, that, uh, that there do does need to be a more adaptive approach to um, to things like COVID emerging more rapidly than you expect and being able to respond to those sort of uh, more nimbly, as it were. And climate change is going to present those sorts of challenges, absolutely. But uh, it's, it's a bit beyond the scope of what we're trying to do with law students uh, in, in this project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Walker. And last comment or question from Deputy Mayor Bill Cashmore, who's also the chair of the CCO Review Committee. Yes, thanks very much. And thank you for your presentation and your comments. Um, as Richard says, I do chair the CCO Oversight Committee. And we are trying through that committee to move into a different space from where we have been in the past with our relationship with our CCOs. That's been, uh, we're moving quite well through that. I'd be very keen, either remotely, um, if this COVID situation lingers much longer, um, talk you through the progress that's been done. We'll, I'll get sent to you um, the recommendations from the review panel and where we are at with implementation of those recommendations. And that includes closer relationships um, with our communities, with our NGOs and also our local boards. And climate change is obviously front and foremost in the thinking around that. And um, I think then I'd be really keen to actually get your interaction from that. So, so it brings you up to speak with where we're at and also then you can feed us back again what more and else or different can we do or should do thank you awesome thank you very much for that opportunity um i mean obviously cco accountability is uh, our main focus of this and the fact that you chair that committee and you're willing to have that court at all with us about your progress is um it's really inspiring and it's really great to hear and um we'd absolutely love to uh talk about this further with you thank you very much
Cool. Just if you could just send me through your email addresses and we'll get get in underway, please. Well done. Well, Cheers. Cool. Thank you. I'll get um if it's easier, I'll get Suad to send your emails to Bill or or the other way around, which <laughs> whichever um is easiest for Suad. But we'll connect you up. Um, yeah, just want to thank you again. Um, very good food for thought here. Um, myself and Councillor Watson did see uh, the Equal Justice Project present to the Auckland Unlimited uh, board, and they really appreciated your uh, presentation and agreed that they were already, you know, on that uh, waka moving forward already. Um, so appreciated the push there. Uh, yeah, and more generally, obviously, um, you would have seen that we did call the climate emergency. We have passed. Titariki Atafiri, Auckland's climate plan. Um, there's strong support right across this committee and council uh, and our local boards and IMSB for action on climate change. Um, we also have our financial disclosures, um, which come through the finance committee. The, we are actually um, doing that earlier than we're legally obliged to, which is fantastic, and all the CCOs uh, report and have to report now on their emissions, how they're reducing them, and um, be very accountable. And that is put out um, as part of our financial disclosure documents, which is um, a really good way of keeping everyone on 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 track as well. And we obviously um, have started adding additional climate um, initiatives, such as the 150 million we approved through the 10-year budget. And all CCOs, not only do they um, present often um, to Deputy Mayor's committee, but they've also at least once presented to this committee um, to show the council laws and IMSB members what they're doing in the climate change space, both adaptation, mitigation, and sustainability in general. So there is a lot, um, a lot coming, but we know that with groups like you um, pushing us to do more and making it firm in, in black and white as well is helpful to ensure that it continues and we're all accountable. So thank you very much uh, for your presentations. We might get um, Megan, Tyler, or someone to update you um, directly about a response to how it's progressing and, and what parts we're already doing and what, how we can do better. But um, yeah, thank you very much. And I will uh, just get a mover. I'm happy to move, Mr. Chair Pepper here. Deputy Chair Pippa Coombe has moved. Anyone would like to second that I can... I'll second, Richard. Bill. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bill Cashmore. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No, thank you. Well, thank you, Tom, um, Winona and David. Have a fantastic...